To install Kali Linux on VMware, we're going to start by downloading the correct distribution. You can either go to the Kali Linux homepage or you can just Google for Kali Linux download and go to the homepage and then either click on the downloads link here or you may end up on the download page straight out of the Google link. You'll notice that there's a lot of different kinds of images you can download. Scroll down and look for the VMware images. Any of these links are going to take you over to the offensive security page. Go ahead and follow that link. When you reach this page, scroll down a little bit and you'll see a table with the different images for different kinds of virtual machines. We're going to use the VMware tab, which is the default. And we're going to download the 64-bit OVA file. If you need a 32-bit version, it's available up above. For most users, the 64-bit is the correct version. Click on the link to download the file. The file is pretty large. It's going to take a while for it to download, so give it around 10 minutes to 20 minutes depending on your connection speed. And it may take longer for very slow connections. Once you've downloaded the file, make sure you know where you downloaded it to and open up VMware. The process is very similar for VMware Fusion, Workstation, Player, or the newer version called Workstation Player. What you're going to do is click on File, and Open, or Import. They'll get you to the same place, but Import is going to save several steps because OVA files are importable and VMware is able to handle this import process more quickly if you just click the import button. So once you click import, go over to wherever you downloaded the file. On Windows, this is going to typically be your downloads directory and the same is true for Mac. We're going to click on the OVA file that we downloaded, select it by either double clicking it or single clicking it and click open. Once it's highlighted, you're going to click continue. Then we're going to go ahead and save this file to our virtual machines directory on our computer. And then the import process is going to begin. This process is slightly different between Workstation and Workstation Player versions 10 through 14 and VMware Fusion, which is the VMware for Macs. But it's a very similar process and the interface didn't change a whole lot. The basic idea is that you want to import the OVA file and follow the prompts for your particular version of VMware. When this import process reaches the end, you can go ahead and hit finish to end the process or you can customize the settings. If you don't want to customize the settings now, you can always do so at any time by clicking on settings for the virtual machine. If you get a message that asks if you want to upgrade the virtual machine, it's safe to go ahead and upgrade. When virtual machines are created in previous versions of VMware Fusion and then you import them into a newer version, it's going to ask you if you want to upgrade. When you're finished, you can go ahead and start the virtual machine by either clicking play or just clicking the finish button and the virtual machine is going to go ahead and start. Note that to change settings in the virtual machine, the virtual machine has to be powered off. So if you want to change the settings, either choose the Customize Settings button at the end of the import process, or go ahead and power off the virtual machine. Once the virtual machine is powered off, you can go over to the virtual machine, right click on it, and choose settings. And then here you can change the different settings. The most common are going to be to change the amount of RAM or processors that the virtual machine is allocated. Be careful to leave plenty of memory for the base operating system. This is called the host operating system. In this case it's Mac, but it works the same for Windows. You want to make sure that there's 2-3 to three gigabytes for the underlying operating system at an absolute minimum. In this case, we have two gigabytes of memory allocated to our virtual machine, which is good. Also, another common setting is to change the amount of hard disk allocated, but as you'll notice, 80 gigabytes are allocated by default, and this is plenty for most users. So to summarize, 
To install Kali Linux as a virtual machine on VMware, we downloaded the correct OVA file, we imported the OVA file, and then we started the virtual machine after the import process had finished.